Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Night Run Studio and for just over a year now I've been working on making my dream game Willard. I've also only been coding for just over two years and in this video I just wanted to share a couple tips I've learned along the way that can hopefully speed up your own journey learning to code and become a game dev. Many game devs starting out have a story kind of like mine. They aren't sure where to begin, so they start by looking for some tutorials. Maybe even find some of the great ones like Brackies, Blackthorn Prod, Games Plus James. These guys are amazing and their tutorials can be super helpful. I know for me, I found very quickly I was able to get a player moving around on the screen. I added enemies, I had damage, even some melee sword attacks, and I was really feeling like a game dev. However, six months in, I sat down to try to create my own game from scratch, made a new project, and realized I didn't actually know how to code anything on my own. I, I couldn't even make a player move without a tutorial to tell me how to do it. This is a really common story and Mark Brown talks about it in his developing series, which should be required watching for anybody starting out game dev. He talks about how when he was learning to make videos, he started with just a few basic skills, polished those, adapted them, and found that he could do an incredible amount with just those basic skills. Then, each time he made a new video, he learned a new skill that he added to his repertoire. This has been my approach to game dev and it has been so helpful. So in this video, I just wanna give an example of one specific thing, creating an inventory system, and how I learned to create something really, really complex by starting with really, really simple skills. One year ago, I really didn't know what I was doing, but I knew I wanted an inventory system. So rather than load up a nine hour tutorial series, I decided to take Mark Brown's advice, start with some small manageable pieces. Really, this is just a thing called decomposition. So you take a giant thing like an inventory system and break it into smaller chunks that are manageable. So I thought, hey, let's start by creating a menu. I can make a menu that turns on and off. I can also make buttons, which could work as inventory slots. So I created a UI button, added some Text Mesh Pro to keep track of the quantity and image where the item could appear, and then I duplicated it. I added more shapes for the background, put some other shapes and text in so I could have a description of the item and a preview picture, and despite a wildly cringeworthy color palette, this was actually starting to look a little bit like an inventory. Okay, but that was the easy part. How am I actually going to code this thing? Well, I created an inventory script and I thought rather than focus on all the things I don't know how to do that my inventory needs, let's start by making the things that I can do. So I just made a reference to the inventory's game object and set it up so that if I pushed an input, in this case cancel, which is my escape key, it would just turn the game object off. And you might be thinking, that's great Matt, I'm glad you've got your decompo whatever system, but what about those of us who got lost on the first step? We don't know how to create a menu yet. Well, if that's the case, then decomposition is definitely for you because instead of getting yourself lost in a massive inventory system tutorial, you can break it into pieces. Start by just finding out how to create a menu. Look up a tutorial, ask ChatGPT. And if you can learn how to do that first step, it'll build the confidence you need to know you can learn how to do the other steps along the way. So meanwhile, I slapped that script on my character and got in the game and sure enough, when I hit escape, the inventory closes. All right, we're getting somewhere. Of course, the inventory can't open now, so I needed a variable. I created a Boolean value for whether or not the inventory is open, and then just made an if statement, so that if the inventory is open, it'll close it, and if it's closed, it will open it. I also needed to make sure that those flags got updated, so that when I closed the inventory, my inventory knew it was closed. Okay, so now I could open and close an inventory. Check, that's something. <laughs> you might be thinking, Matt, that's not an inventory. You're an idiot. Touche. But with each task that I completed, I found my confidence growing. I was starting to actually believe that I could make an inventory system. And I was also getting better and better at the skills I already had and learning to adapt them in new ways. Now that I had my first bite-sized piece out of the way, I could move on to the next one, inventory slots. So now that I had an inventory, sort of, it was time that I actually hooked it up to some items. So I grabbed a mushroom sprite and threw it onto one of these slots. And I got the idea of making a slot for each type of item I could have in the game. So when I collect a mushroom, I would turn this slot on and update its amount. I then made a mushroom item in the game just by tossing a sprite in there with a collider and I gave it its own script. 
again, there was a lot of things that an item could do, but I focused on the things I knew. So I gave it a quantity, how many items I actually wanted to pick up when I collected this. I connected it to TextMesh Pro, which is just the Unity way of having text appear on your screen. Now my text should update when I collect the item. And then I also just made a reference to the game object slot so that I could turn it on and off. This is where I used my on collision enter method. This just fires whenever the object hits something. And I had added an if statement, so it would only happen if it actually hit the player. Now I would turn the mushroom slot on when I collect the item. I'd also make sure to update the text on the slot so that it would match the quantity of the item I was collecting. Did a little hookup in Unity and it was working. I could collide with the item and now my slot was filling up with five mushrooms. There were some problems though. I wanted the object to go away after I collected it. Excellent. All right, so now my project was starting to vaguely resemble an actual inventory and I was staying within my goal of only using code I understood really well. Okay, so I realized these small victories didn't exactly make me the goat, but I was starting to feel like one. Next up, we needed the items to actually do something when we click on them, so I thought, let's make a healing item. So I created this little animation that could pop up over top of my snowman that would just have a number. It would go up in the air, get larger, and become slowly transparent, and then disappear, so that when he gets healed, you'd have this nice little pop-up to show he was actually getting healed. So next up, I made an item action script, and my thinking here was that I would just have a special function for every single item you'd have in the game. So when I clicked on the slot that had the mushroom in it, it would do something, and later on I could make other slots for other ones. So I made a reference to that health pop-up. I also made a reference to its text so that I could change the amount depending on what item got clicked on. In this case, we'll make the mushroom heal for five. I'll then just turn it on. It'll play the animation. And then I also wanted to make sure that I actually turned off this slot afterwards so the item looked like it was disappearing. All right, as per usual, my method was simply to create something, try it out, see how it failed, and then fix it afterwards. In this case, things were actually working pretty good. I just had to deal with that looping animation that went on forever. So I just unclicked that loop, and that time we took care of two tasks in one go. So now it's time to scale it up and see if we could get this to work for another slot. So I created another item, this time just for testing purposes made a tree that I called a healing tree. And more or less did what I did with the mushroom item, this time creating a healing tree script instead. I copied the contents of the mushroom script in here and just made little tweaks so that it referred to the healing tree slot instead. Then in my inventory I just made a duplicate of the mushroom slot and just tweaked this one so it had a different sprite and different name. I then had to just go into the actual slot itself where I had my item action script to make sure there was an item action for the tree, just like I'd done for the mushroom earlier. There's a little tweaking to do in Unity, but when I got to testing and tried this out, both items were collecting, and while we had a little bit of trouble, it was mostly working. The final step for this prototype was just going to be to get it so that my item description and preview image actually updated when I clicked on items. So for this, I headed back into my item action script. Here I just made a reference to that description text so that we could update it later, as well as to the image that we were going to want to change. Then down in each of our item's methods, I just stored a message that we would have display. I then would need to change the sprite. For this, we'd actually have to store a sprite so that the script actually knew what sprite to make appear. Then we just made it so when you clicked on mushroom, it made the mushroom sprite appear. Just repeated the same thing for the other item, which I know is not super efficient, and I'll have to change that later, but for a prototype, it was working. Lastly, I needed it so that it did different things on each click. I wanted the first click to just display the item's information, and the second click to actually have us use it up. So I created an integer to keep track of how many clicks each item had had. And then I made it so that if it had not been clicked, it would display the information when you clicked it, and then make the integer go up by one. That way the next time, since it was at one, it would now cause you to actually use the item and then just reset itself. I then repeated the same logic for my other item slot. Please don't call the efficiency police. I know this is a mess, but it's a prototype and we're just learning here. At this point, there was a bunch of tweaking to do in Unity, but we were ready to test. Looked like the items were collecting. They were appearing in the inventory as they should. I could click to get a description click again to use the item, and repeat. Now it's probably important that I state the obvious here. 
this is not an awesome inventory system. It's actually pretty terrible. But what was amazing about this experience is that I actually created a working inventory system using just a few basic building blocks. My skills improved as I did it, and also now I'm really aware of the flaws of this system. I know where to start searching now when I look for tutorials. It was this experience that led me to look into scriptable objects as a better way to store data so I could pass more information about these items along much easier. Creating a prototype would definitely not be the end of my learning on inventory systems. I would go on to create an equipment and inventory system for my own game that are actually working pretty good, and even make a tutorial series on how I got there. Please don't get me wrong, I have nothing against tutorial series, I think they're amazing. The trick is when we rely on them entirely, rather than learning how to do things and try things on our own first. This is the process I've been using at every step of development for my game, and so far I'm really excited with how things are turning out and where it's going to go in the future. I hope you found this one helpful. If you have, please leave me a comment down below or remember to click like. Until next time, this is Matt with Nightman Studio. Cheers.